Barber College Success, brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC, Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol, and now Proficient Nail Academy, downtown JC. Here today to push some straight love to you, some serious heat. Spread in love the JC way that people say, but you know what I say, spread in love the only way is the Crown Cuts way. Today we got a banging episode. It's going to be rich. It's going to be flavorful. And we're going to come at you. I know you got some good questions, some good thoughts. Listen to us. Yeah, this, 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 this is going to be deep. Check it out today. And my co-host himself, I'm going to introduce himself. Go Jordan ahead. Baba, Jordan Barr, Bristol, Tennessee, represents Studio 423. Hope you all doing it. Having a good day. Yes. And we got two important guests today. Probably one of the biggest episodes we'll have. We're going to come with some straight heat. I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves. Good friends of mine, mentors, pastors, people of the community. Um, I can, int- the, the, the list is so long to introduce these guys, but I'm let you h- hear these guys' voices because it's important you hear these guys' voices because this episode today, I'm telling you, is going to blow up some charts and it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. But I'll let you guys introduce yourselves and talk. I mean, the people want to hear you. What are y'all names? Introduce yourself and a little bit about yourself and just give a little snippet about what you do. Oh, man, thanks for having me, Craig. Uh, my name is Antoine Yoko. Uh Currently, I'm a campus pastor here at Depot City uh, Campus in Johnson City, part of the City Church family. Um, what do I do? Um, man, I'm a father of two, a husband to a beautiful woman of 17 years. And uh, man, I just love doing life, uh, love knowing you, and I'm excited for this conversation. Yes, and Pastor Perry, uh, there's so much. The, the list is so long. Um, I could just take the whole episode and introduce yourself, but I think you do a better job introducing yourself. Tell me what you're doing and introduce yourself, Pastor. Now, thanks, Greg. Uh, Perry Stuckey, I said I'm president of Perry Stuckey's Transformation Advisory Group. I uh, worked in corporate America and global companies uh, where we did business in 100 countries around the world for over 40 years. I uh, retired from that as a C-suite executive. Uh, coach a lot of CEOs, and I'm also a pastor. I've been in ministry now for over uh, nearly 40 years. And yes. uh, love doing both, and uh, frankly, just uh, humbled that God has been extremely kind and gracious to me as I've tried to help people and help leaders and companies and executives be successful around the globe. And shout out again to Feed Spot ranking us in the top, 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 top 25 podcasts in the country and in the world. Thank you for the love on um, Feed Spot. Again, check us out. Top 25, that's a, that's a major ranking. Um, we help a lot of people, help the students, help them get in barbers, get on their trail, get on the track. And again, shout out to Feed Spot one more time. Uh, sponsor, colossalbrand.org. Um, check them out. They got some really great materials, great gear. Check those boys out. It's really amazing. So today our episode is going to be on barbering and the Bible. So I'll share a story. One time I was in the mall and um, there's these guys who always want to talk about the Bible. And I'm, a lot of times people push them away, shun them because they just have a one track mind when they're shopping. And the guy came up to me and he said, um, would you mind if I share a word or two with you about the Bible? I was like, sure, why not? I was sitting there waiting for my wife in the aisle. And I said to him, OK, on the one condition, if you can tell me where in the Bible they talk about barbering. And he got stumped. He looked at me like, ah, oh, you got me. I don't know. <laughs> and I was just like, I mean, conversation's got to be in both ways. You want to share something? I'm not too versed in the Bible myself, but I, it was funny that I stumped him. And we, anyway, we started talking about the Bible and we conversed and we had an hour and a half conversation. And he was just amazed at how I stumped him. What do you think about that, Jordan? I feel like... <laughs> I'm sure when you probably read it, I mean, I've never read the, I've never read the Bible. I'll go ahead and be honest. Uh, I feel like that's something that you probably wouldn't think about when you're reading it, that you're like reading about. There might be a part in the Bible that actually has something about barbering in it, which I'm not 100 percent sure does it. But I'm sure you have two people here that I know. Um, if Remember, we talk it. about it in the, in, the, in the first chapter in the, in the Miladies text with Leviticus talking yes. about. So you. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, I mean, your memory. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's in, obviously it's in history. Right. But. I just say, I don't know if it actually been talked about in the actual Bible, which it probably would coincide since it's, it's pretty much in, it was always been a thing since the beginning of time. So, I mean. Right. That's big. That's me. So, um, Pastor Perry, how do you see the intersection between the teachings of the Bible and the art of barbering? 
That's a great question, Craig. The reality of it is uh, barbering has existed as long as mankind in many ways. Right. So if you go back to 5th century B.C., uh, barbering is even mentioned in the Bible. As a matter of fact, when Joseph, uh, you know, was uh, actually taken when the Israelites were, were literally into uh, coming out of Goshen and they were near Egypt. And the Pharaoh had a dream. And so no one could interpret his dream. Right. And then Joseph was incarcerated for a crime he didn't commit. He had mm -hmm. spent, you know, Joseph, uh, really, if you, you think about his life, he had spent 13 years in prison for something he didn't do. He was accused of raping Potiphar's wife. The first thing before he could go in front of Pharaoh, he had to shave. Right. And that's so, so Joseph shaved <laughs> and, and uh, takes care of it. And it's all about barbering because a Pharaoh had a barber. Who's going to shave him? Uh, he, you know, in this case, uh, he it had to be a barber. Yeah, it has to be a barber. So he did it. You know, he got his shave, went in front of Pharaoh and uh, explained the dream. And the rest is history. And then Pharaoh makes him the prime minister of all of Egypt, second in command, which existed a lot longer than the United States. And uh, and so grooming is many aspects of the barber. You look at Judges 16 and 17. Nazarites uh, didn't cut their hair. And uh, Absa Samson is one of your famous characters that most people know about around the world. That's easy. He didn't. He didn't. Uh, he couldn't cut his hair because he had a Nazareth uh, bow. But but you also look at uh, Absalom. Most people don't know about Absalom, which was David's son, hmm. and uh, he had golden locks of hair. As a matter of fact, he he was one of the most handsome people on the planet. Wow. Absalom didn't have a blemish on his body. Hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, his hair was so long, he cut it once a year. Mm -hmm. His hair was five pounds, and he cut it just because of the weight of his locks of right. his hair. And uh, that, that's in the Bible. We, we, we find that, uh, you know, in a number of places. We find that in 2 Samuel, and uh, 2 Samuel chapter 14, verses 25 and 26. So what's going through your mind? Right? <laughs> you listen now. You're Pastor, shocking. You're Pastor, rocking over there. Pastor laying on us uh, real good. You know, uh, there's a lot of things that goes through my mind. Uh, I had also, when you asked me this question, I thought, man, you know, I've never preached on barbers. I've never right. talked about that. But as I began to do some study and uh, look through some of my commentaries, uh, one of the things that stands out to me is anytime you deal with hair in the Bible in a barber, it's always on the premises of a big change. Okay. It always comes on the cusp of something transformational. For example, Pastor mentioned the Nazarites. Something about that. You know, a Nazarite was somebody who had set himself apart for God's service. Right. Right. You think about Samson, the whole issue with him cutting his hair was because he basically relinquished the call that God had placed on his life. Right. Right. You go to Romans 12 when Paul talks about setting yourself apart, you know, he says, be not transformed or be transformed, excuse me, by the renewing of your mind. Right. That whole idea is setting yourself apart. So what I want to say is this, and, and you know, this is really deep and I appreciate you having this it's, conversation. It's a great time because, because I'm looking forward to it. Well, and let me say this, you know, barbers have such an intimate seat in the lives of their customers. Right. Right. Barbers are the people who people open up to. Yes. Right. You understand what they're going through. And let me go back. I won't preach, I promise, but I might but this, do it. This, when, you, this, this, this the like. when you think about hair and the transformation that comes through cutting hair, it always comes before something big. Right. right. There's nobody who sits in a barber chair and then leaves upset. Right. Generally speaking, if you if you're doing your job right. And even right. now, people want to transform themselves. They want to feel better. They go to a barber, get a cut. Well, well not only that, barber and, and the work you do is so paramount. If, you, if you're going to have a high school graduation, yeah. people want to look good. Right. They want to get a trend. Yeah. You want to get a wedding, get married. What do people do? They exactly. Get groomed. And so and, and that's why it's so important. And grooming was important to God. Yeah. That's yeah. why you couldn't just come a certain way. There, mm -hmm. There's some right. guidelines of how you wanted to behave and how you, you had to have high hairstyles that was important. So, yeah. so it's really critical. Keep going. This is a yeah, no, I mean, uh, I mean, I could go all day, but I mean, you know, one of the things that really stands out to me, and I'll, I'll just make this brief, um, you know, when you really begin to look at uh, some of the prophecy in the book of Isaiah, specifically, I jotted it down because I didn't want to misspeak. Isaiah chapter 7, there's a passage, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 20, there's a passage that says, in the same day shall the Lord shave with the razor that is hired. And I'll pause right there. And right. the whole purpose of this passage is not necessarily speaking literally about shaving, but it's a symbol of punishment and consequence that the people of God were going to face, right? right. They had been hard-headed, knuckle-headed people. Say with me, 
They had been hard-headed, knuckle-headed people. And so God mentions this shaving as a metaphor of what they were going to go through, right? You remember before I said, when we talk about barbers and what they do for people, it's all about shame. Right. Right. So the <laughs> idea after this uh, judgment, if you will, in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 20, is that once they go through this punishment, this difficult period, they will come out on the other side poised and ready for what God had for them. So when we talk about Barb and I'm like, man, yeah, you guys have a great seat for people who are ready to go to the next level. So when, when, when you listen to this, Jordan, what do you think? What's going through your mind? Uh, see, it's, it's, it's all new to me because I never really <laughs> actually, like I'm saying, I never really actually dived into uh, to anything like this. So it's actually, it's, it's nice to, obviously I like history a lot. So anything yeah. that involves history or learning anything. And like the Bible history, is a historical document. And it, I love yeah. hearing stuff about but, that. Cool. But what's so fascinating to me, a lot of people try to, dismiss or dilute or diffuse the word, but it has evidence of stuff that we're using today. Yeah. A raising, shaving of the beard. So how can you even think about diluting the word or pushing to the side and say it's not true when there's evidence in there that we use real life today? You know what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah. We use a razor. Yeah. We shave those words. I mean, they didn't just put those words in there in, in 2021. No, you're right, Craig. And in the reality, <laughs> I, let me just read a passage of scripture to you. I think it's really important for people to get it. It's 2 Samuel 14, verse 25 and 26. God inspired the writing of the Bible. Right. So appearance is important to him. For sure. So having barbers and the work you do is paramount. Let me just read this to you. Now in all of Israel, there was no one so much to be praised for his handsome appearance as Absalom. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he cut the hair of his head, for at the end of every year he would get a haircut, and it was heavy on him, and he cut his hair because his locks were so long. They amounted to 200 shekels by the king's weight. Hmm. 200 shekels equals to five pounds of hair. Wow. Imagine you got somebody in your chair, hair grows so well, so well grown, handsome, sharp, and you're trimming his hair, and it's five pounds of just hair. That's what it weighs. That's a lot. That's you, know what, you know what that's like on somebody's head? Why you had to trim it? Imagine having his neck. that weight and what, what's <laughs> happening. And so the point of it is, is that if you think about everything that we do that's associated with success, I like what you're saying, you want to be well-groomed. You get no. ready to get married. Transformation. I want to come in there. I want a transformation. I want to look good for my wedding. Yeah. Guess what? Every time someone goes on television or go what? They get made up. Yes. Yeah. Barbers are instrumental to the success of our lives. Yeah. And people love it. It's a place where we go to vent. So, so one of my questions is how, and I know you, there's so many parables, so many things in the Bible. We could probably look in there and see something about um, the weather or, or something about um, lawyers or, or judges. You know, so... How is it so easily overlooked when you ask the question about where in the Bible that it relates to barbering that is hard, so hard to find? I think it's simple. I think because when people read the Bible, they're looking for spiritual insight. Right. And I think that they will read and gloss over things that doesn't relate that's to, to something that they can do that's mm -hmm. going to help them spiritually grow. So it's like when you read the Bible, and it mentions something about food. You don't pay as much attention right, to it. Right, right, right. As you true. start saying, look, I, I lost a loved one. Mm -hmm. So now I want to find scripture that talk about how do I deal with my grief. Yeah. And I, that's how people really focus on the Bible oftentimes and not thinking about it. What's beautiful about the Bible, every topic, every subject that you're dealing with, you can find something that relates to it in those uh, 66 books of God's word. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. That's good. Hey, you know, uh, uh, I gave a sermon this past Sunday, Depot City Church uh, here in Johnson City. Check out our Facebook page for the message. And the series is rooted. And we're talking about um, basically how to become more entrenched in the word of God. Right. Ephesians three, Paul prays a beautiful prayer at verse 14 and 19. He says that you may know how deep and wide and vast mm -hmm. is the love of God. Um, and, and why do I say that? Because. I believe if we are reading the word, then God will speak to us no matter what we do for a vocation. Right. Yep, yep. Yeah. So just to piggyback on pastor's answer there, um, 
we're not necessarily reading the Bible all the time for what God wants to say to us, but it's for what we want. Right. There's not necessarily anything wrong with that, but right. I think when we open ourselves up to how God wants to speak to us, then we begin to hear so much more. Let me just say this. Um, I don't know that we necessarily have to look specifically for things in the word. I believe that if we're reading the word and we understand mm -hmm. that it is God's words, right. then he'll speak to us. Right. So we open ourselves <laughs> up. So as barbers, right. Um, man, I think you are instrumental in faith. For you sure. may not have ever thought that, but again, when somebody steps in your chair and you don't know what they've been through, right. And you don't know what their last month has been like. You don't know what the last year has been like. And when they step in your chair, you are a pastor of sorts. Right. I mean, but the, the point is, right, I've heard Perry said when he was preaching, we, yeah. Perry's my pastor, I go to his church, and I've yeah. heard him say, Perry, sometimes people just come and they don't necessarily want to hear you speak. They just want you, they just want, they just want you to listen to them. Yeah. And, and I practiced that at times. time. Just, when I heard you say that, I was like, you know what? Sometimes in my moment to help someone, I might just have to listen and fall back. That's right. And Craig, what you're saying is so important because Really, having a relationship with God means that it's not always us talking and asking Him for yeah. things. It's listening yeah. and allow the Word to talk to us. Now, one of my favorite passages of Scripture, and I think it brings all of this together, is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all yeah. your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Right. And part of, uh, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Grooming. It's something you have to do every day. Yeah. So when you, you groom and you want to acknowledge him how you're getting groomed. And if you're a barber, you cut in someone's head, you want to say, look, I want to make them look the best I can. That's intimate Because time. it's a reflection on me as the barber is a reflection on their appearance and what they want. You don't dictate to the hairstyle they want. You just tell them how it can be done and, and you show them and give them examples. Because sometimes my dad was a barber, so, so I grew up in a barber shop. And, yeah. Sometimes people will come in and really don't know. They ask them for a haircut that doesn't fit their head very well. That's so true. <laughs> so a, a sharp barber, a sharp barber will, will tell the person gently and kind, like God's grace is saying, hey, this style, this haircut means this, maybe better on this type of shaped head. Now, yeah. whatever you want, I'll give you. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what the implications may be. And, and I like that because that's the dialogue you want to have. And what you're saying, in that exchange, you got to listen to the customer. And in the change with God, we got to talk to him, yeah. then listen to God and let him speak to our hearts. Yeah. I, I, I love this dialogue. How many times have so many people come to your church, Jordan, you just have to listen to them and not really understanding that you're really helping them more than they ever think? I'm trying to, like, because most of the time when they come in, they're like, yeah, I want to, like, uh, look like, you know, I want a mid-fade. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, usually typically I try to lure them in. Like, I'll show them a picture of a different type of haircut. I'm like, well, have you ever tried this type of haircut or, like, uh, you know, it might suit you better. It might make you look, you know, make make your face look less round. You know, so it's always stuff like that. It kind of people sometimes people are gonna listen what they what sometimes people will listen to what they want to listen to. Like it's not yeah. if they really want to look. You know, if they're really looking for something new and want to try something new, they're gonna let you. As, as, as we having this conversation, like like thoughts are formulating through my mind, and thinking like we you really are ministering to people. You are you are ministering to people. So. Yeah. Barbara and, 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 and the Bible go so hand in hand because you're so close to someone and you're right by the air, you're yeah. touching them, that's an intimate moment. And that's trust. That's trust. And, and people are trusting you with their look, their parents, and you're giving them sound advice and you put them on a, on, a, on a platform, on a trajectory to feel better about themselves. And that's what ministering is, when people understand and get it. And Craig, that, that's so wonderful what you're saying because God tells us in everything we do, let it give him praise and honor. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you, you are talking to a customer that gets in your barber shop and that customer may be going through a hard time. So I, I'll give an intimate example of what happened to me once. I, I remember uh, being in a barber shop and my brother calls me on my cell phone and he tells me my sister just passed away. Mm -hmm. My countenance was jovial, and then my barber, when I made, said, what's, go what's going on with you, Perry? You, since you've taken that call, your countenance had changed. And I said, my sister just died, mm -hmm. and I just got word. And so now she was a female barber, and she, she was a hairstylist, did a lot of other things. She said, 
Oh, man. And she began to minister to me mm -hmm. while I'm getting the work done that I needed. And that was a blessing for me because I never forgot it because it kind of strengthened me now to go and deal with an unprecedented issue. My sister was four years old than me. I didn't anticipate that happening. And now I got to drive to, to Louisiana yeah. and I got to deal with, with this issue. But you are so instrumental because you never know what a customer is going through that right. sits in your chair. Yeah. Not only are you taking care of their, their grooming, their hair, but you also making them feel good emotionally and yeah. mentally. Yeah. And that's the art of a great barber that, that knows um, exactly what to say, how to say it, and how to help customers. And that's what the Bible does. Yes. The Bible gives us comfort when we're sure. hurting. It gives us spiritual food for our soul when we need that nourishment. Yeah. And, and uh, I just like that. I, I like the, the <laughs> principles uh, that a lot of barbers, and, and you know the history of barbers yeah. and what those, uh, what it meant in terms of why, because barbers would, would uh, give community medical aid back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So true. That's important. Yeah. What do you, That's what, true. So what do you think, Anton, when you hear that, the formulation, that plan right there with how Perry just eloquently just put that in there. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with everything you said. Uh, certainly, uh, barbers are ministers. Barbers are essential. Um, obviously, when you think about the Confess Project right. and, you know, the impact that barbers can have on the mental health of the communities, um, it's important. Uh, you know, one thing did come to mind as I was just kind of thinking through, uh, I was thinking about this last night and some this morning, uh, so I was having my coffee just so I could be prepared to offer something that might help somebody. Um, uh, in Leviticus 14, um, Moses speaks to a group of lepers. Mm -hmm. You know, we think about leprosy, if you know anything about it, is a horrible skin condition. We don't see it much anymore, especially right. in the developed world, but it, it is still out there from what I understand. But a horrible disease, and in, 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 in the camp, when the tribes were set up, if you had leprosy, you, you were nowhere close to the camp. You know, mm -hmm. uh, where, wherever God was, you had to be ceremonially clean. That's a whole other lesson. But the point is, Whenever a leper was healed, Moses had com or, 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 or he had commanded these folks to come in and to shave. Wow, so big. there were two reasons. Big. That's there big. Were two reasons. <laughs> Number one, uh, with regard to just being clean, right? Get rid of all the scales. You can imagine, you know, yes. you're coming through some type of disease like that. So he says, shave not only the head on the hair, but they're shaving everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about waxing and this and that. But then number two, again, I talked. I mentioned that point of being ceremonially clean. Right. So when you think about being ceremonially clean um, in, in the Hebrew uh, uh, times, that meant they were able to approach. Right. All the people in the camp who were uh, uh, able to be accepted by God because they had been clean. Right. They had made their sacrifices. They didn't have any known sin on their hearts necessarily. So what if, why do I say all that? I say that to say because when we liken leprosy to emotional baggage, mm -hmm. right, wow. emotional diseases, mental health diseases, you think about family diseases, family issues. This is deep, right? That's what but it's as about. a barber, when you think about the baggage that you can't even see that somebody's holding on to, so you never know the weight that you might be taking off of somebody's shoulders when you clean them up, when you take your time and you're cleaning up their goatee just right. You just did mine the other day. Right. I felt like a million bucks when I left. <laughs> but in all seriousness, man, mm -hmm. yeah, ministry is absolutely something that you guys as barbers are doing because you don't know what you're helping scale away. And the importance of this podcast, and it's going to reach so many people, a lot of people don't know what they're doing. And I'm not saying about the skill-wise. Yeah. It's more than just the skill yeah, yeah. that we are, that we are, that, that we are in, in, um, giving to our community yeah. and giving to yeah. people. It's more than just the skill. Yeah. And that's why it's, at times I just say the hair cutting is not for everybody. But that's the easy part once you get it. That's it. That's the easy part. The other parts of just kind of ministering to people and making people feel good about themselves, mm. that's a game changer mm. because you don't know, like you said, you don't know what someone, what burden they're carrying when they come in and sit in that chair. Yeah. No, that's great, Craig. And, you know, you reminded me of, of the scripture in 1 Peter 3 and 3 in the New Testament. And Kyle said, and I'm going to read the scripture that I'm going to elaborate how that correlates to even Barbara. And, and this, in this scripture, Peter says, do not let your adorn be external the braiding of hair and put it on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. In essence, he's saying, don't get so hung up in life yeah. on your clothing. Yeah. Don't get so hung up on your hairstyle. Because if you fixate so much on that, you'll lose sight of what really matters. Mm, wow. And what really matters is for us is, is that we got to take care of our mental, emotional, and physical well-being. That means good. you want to be 
You, you want to be balanced in your life. You want to right. be physically fit, emotionally fit, mentally he yeah. healthy, spiritually healthy. And when you get fixated on one thing, you go off track. Yeah. Right. So if I come and sit in your chair and you get so fixated on my hair right. and then you don't pay attention to me right. and you, and there may be something that you could, I'm giving you a glimpse that I'm hurting. Yeah. There have been people who been in, in a barber shop, literally, getting hair done and the barber noticed something about them said, look like you might be having a stroke. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you, and, yeah. and you see the person's uh, figuration of their face chain and the barber has the wherewithal to get them the medical attention they need. That, that's yeah. why it's so important that you stay laser focused on the entire person. And it's kind of what uh, Peter said in 1 Peter 3 and 3, which I love. Did you realize your role was that important, Jordan? I, well, honestly, yeah. yeah. I feel like I've, I've had a lot of people that have came in that have, that have uh, you know, gave me images of them being depressed or them going through stuff. And I've talked to them and I've, and after having the cut and also giving them that emotional stability of them, me talking to them, it, it, it changes them after they leave. So I, I feel like I've, uh, I know my service in my community and um, what, how, how I portray myself to my clients. And, it's and, more than just a bar, like a person that's cutting your hair. And, and that's what I was hoping that this podcast, will, will, when it reaches out to wherever it reaches out, we, right now we're, we're, over, we're in over 75 countries. And I think sometimes people need to hear these things, understand how important they are. Because you're just cutting hair and no one is, might be saying, hey, man, you, 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 you have value, you're important. Yeah. So wherever this reaches you in Guam and Australia and Japan, um, it's important to understand you are worthy, yeah. you are a pillar, you, yeah. are, you, you are meaningful to your community, and you're more than just a barber. Yeah, and you it's know, good. Craig, you said that that is deep what you said, because the reality of it is people come to a hairstylist and a barber for several reasons. Mm -hmm. One, they come because they're skilled, yep. and they know they're going to get good customer service, but secondly, they come because they feel like they're going to get ministered to. Yeah. And they're going to be in a place where they feel loved, a yeah. place where they feel respected, mm -hmm. and someone who knows their hair, their texture, their style, can help their appearance look better. That is powerful ministry. And it is an opportunity for all of the, the people around the globe who are watching this podcast for them to understand that this podcast is telling you that you matter. Yeah, you and, matter to God, and, and you deep. matter to your community. Yeah and you are special and important. And there's plenty of spiritual and personal growth that a barber endures. <clears throat> you minister and you give giving to your client, but at the same time, there's plenty of spiritual and personal growth that you go Absolutely. Through, and you better yourself yeah. at the same time. Yeah, well, that's good. I can't, even, I can't say it better. Um, man, this, this is rich conversation. Um, you know, I might have a sermon series brewing, <laughs> you know, on the godly barber. I mean, uh -huh. But, but that's, how, that's what it's about. I mean, we, we, we have something we call each one, teach one at, at the yeah. school there on Fridays. And that's the hope that each of us can learn from each other. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure before this, not too many people understood how many different passages in the mm -hmm. Bible that talks about yeah. barbering, the leprosy, the shaving, all these passages that, that we have brought up so far. It's a lot of new things to me too as well. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting, yeah. it's fun because it's making me want to go back and do some more research yeah. and go in the Bible and find it and be like, man, that's what we was talking about. Yeah, yeah that I, brings up. I, I had a conversation uh, recently with my son and we were talking about the order of the world, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we talk about, you know, the universe and how the, the earth is perfectly situated so that the sun is right where it needs to be. Right. We have gravity. We have oxygen that we could breathe. Um, I was talking about the human body and how we're made. We've been breathing here for this last half hour. We're not thinking about it. Our heart has its own charge. I was talking with him about the order of the, of the earth and how, for me, that is enough evidence that God exists. Um, wh where am I going with this? Because when you think about barbering, mm -hmm. right, whether, whether you are a believer or not, if you're cutting hair, you're loving somebody, right? right. And, as pastors, we'll tell you first thing, if you do anything without love, then it's meaningless. The Bible supports that over and over, that you must love one another, First John 4, 7, right? And so, I mean, I, I just think that what pastor has said, what you have shared, and even what you have said, man, like, you, when you are barbering, for the barbers out there, when you are cutting somebody's hair, if you're doing it for a dollar, you're missing so much. Right. 
But if you're doing it to show that individual in your seat that they are made in the image of God, that they are valuable, that they do have worth, that they do have purpose, man, I believe, I, I think you will agree, Pastor, that the Lord Almighty wants to work through you if you have that heart and that it's, mindset. It's funny that you said because when I first started and I, and I tell people when I came into this industry, I didn't do it for no type of dollar amount. Yeah. It was just a passion of mine that I loved and it was artwork and it was just watching me transform someone every 30 minutes and they just leave in my hands and going right. into this work. Right. It was just a joy and, I lo- and a love that I have for Pat, for Barbara. And even now when I speak, people always say, man, I can tell you, you're real passionate about what you do. Right. You must love so, that So where does that, where does that love come from? My passion. But where does that passion come from? It's deeper than that. It's, it, 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 you know, what you are, the question you're asking, Craig, is really important because here's the reality of life and every topic and every yeah. subject. Uh, if you go into this profession for money, yeah. you're not going to be successful yeah. because if your aim is just to cut enough heads to make X right. amount of dollars, eventually who you really are is going to come out to people. Mm-hmm. And when you're in it because you care about the customer, yeah. you care about helping people be successful, you care about doing the right thing, you mm-hmm. put in the work, you do that, it's got, you're going to be great at yeah. this. Yeah. And that's an every, that's a principle, that's a biblical principle. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, when you do it for God's glory, for his honor, when you demonstrate servant leadership, he blesses you. Yeah. Because, the, because he opens up the windows of opportunity because of that. And if you look at even sports, the people who do it because they're passionate about it, love it, want to play with the right team, demonstrate humility, you love them. Yeah. You, you look at players who are selfish and yeah. it's all about them. They don't show up at practice. They make the team bus late. They're yeah. not good teammates. Yeah. Let, and, and that's the beauty of this because in yeah. every aspect of life, if yeah. you think about it, uh, and the way Craig said why he got into the business, it wasn't about money. It was about that I have passion. Yeah. I like to see people looking good. Yeah. I like to make a difference in their life. Not only that, I'm taking it to another level where we're involved in the Confess Project. All these initiatives is how do I help people be better oh, yeah. mentally, physically, spiritually. And it, you know what I love about what Craig does? He'll hear me minister on Sunday and he'll take my sermon all the time. outline and then he'll share it with his students all the time. who went in barber class. Yeah. And that, that tells me. <laughs> And I was shocked. I had no idea he was doing that yeah, until yeah. I come in the shop and he's telling me That's what great. he's doing. And, and it really speaks to authenticity, speaks yeah. to someone who cares deeply about. And, and I don't listen. I, I asked him, I said, so, Craig, you know you compete in competition. You were training these people to go to compete against you in business. You know what he said? I don't care because I want them to be successful. Yeah. That's why God keeps blessing him. Yeah, yeah. I, and... and, and it's really good. And, and just to circle back to where I started when I was talking about the order of the universe right. and how, for me, it confirms that our God exists. Yes. Yahweh, right? Jehovah, Nisi, mm-hmm. El Roy, whatever name you want to call him, El Shaddai, yes. Adonai. <laughs> um, that which is inside of you, that love, mm-hmm. it doesn't just happen. Right. That's right. Now, we love because God loved us first. First John 4, 7 again, right? Yeah. He loved us while we were still in sin. Yeah. And so I just want to make sure I made that point. If, I, if you don't hear anything else I've no, said today, I did, I did. that as a barber, as a barber, you're doing something, whether you realize it or not, that demonstrates that our creator is real. <laughs> right. What other reason do you have to care about other people? Right. It doesn't just come from ourselves. We're flawed people. Right. We're totally depraved. The Bible teaches us. Mm-hmm. But because of the love of God, we can put somebody else to need before our own. That's, Are you with me? That's big. So I, I just want to make sure I made that yeah, point. Like it's, when it's, you barbers start to question, like, why is this my purpose? Well, I would suggest that your purpose is much bigger than you realize yourself. No, I, I think that's enough. <laughs> and for those who are watching this podcast, is really to understand that pursuing this avenue yeah. of work is not to be a barber but to be someone that can be used as yeah. an instrument of justice, yeah. an instrument of grooming, uh, to make people's life better yeah. than just doing their heads. Yeah. And when you do that, and when you approach this from that perspective, yeah. that I'm here to not only uh, help someone groom, make them look better, yeah. uh, you know, in, in doing their hair, but also to have them be all they can be. That's right. And a beautiful human being. Yeah. And then, 
the request Craig is making <laughs> is go out and do that for others. That's great. And I love that. I, that's, I, I, I mean, do. that's the whole premise behind why you do it. And people who do that yeah. and CEOs who do that will have, will have countless yeah. hundreds of people wanting to come to work for that organization. Yeah. Mm. And that's what's important. That's and, right. And everyone who's a leader in these leadership positions, whether they are on a private business, on a barbershop, or on a small company, if you're only in it for selfish reason, you will never be as successful as yeah. you could be. Because when you just embrace God and what he will do, you, you're going to be fantastic at yeah. what you do. And One, you're going to be a magnet for other people right. who want to be a part of what you're doing. Yeah. What did you get from that, Jay? I, I like this a lot. <laughs> Getting that little tingy feeling every time I used to go to church when I was younger. So, uh, uh, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's great because it's everything that they've they've been saying. It's everything that I've I've felt and I've have felt ever since the beginning. I've started barbering, right. and uh, I've I've uh, you know I always try to help people out. I always try to push people towards the right way and doing stuff the right way. And I feel like. What he said that that really actually got that uh, made a lot of sense. A lot of sense. Both of y'all, what both y'all said, made a lot of sense to me. And uh, I don't know, I just I can't really put it into words. I guess you could say. Right, it's, right. So a question is, so if there's a bar out there, especially like beginning barbers who want to grow spiritually and as a barber and in the faith. What, what's the best way to approach it? Because a lot of people struggle with that at times. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a, it's a, both of us and all of us can chime in and talk about this because we all got perspective. I think it may be different for each individual mm -hmm. depending on what they're going through, but I think the most important thing anyone can do is begin a dialogue with God. God, show me what you created me to do in a way that will bring you honor and that will bring honor to my community, to honor to the customers mm -hmm. and honor to me and show me through your word, open the Bible, get word, show me through your divine holy word, the error of my ways. You know, because one of my favorite scriptures is 1 John 1 and 9, where mm -hmm. it simply tells us if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that cleansing process requires us to study the word, to get around people that can make us better, who can mentor us, shape us, mold us. We all need dialogue. Right. We all need someone uh, that can enhance what we're doing to make us better. And, and if you isolate yourself from people, isolate yourself, that is a trick of the enemy to stay depressed, to not get help. And I, and I tell people this all the time. When you hurt it, that's when you need to be in church. Yeah. Because that, that you, you're going to get spiritual. Um, you know, it's a hospital for you to get transformed spiritually. And if you don't show up, you can't get it. And you know what? If I refuse to come to the barbershop, my, my hair is not going to look any better. <laughs> not gonna get, I'm not going gonna... to get the, the nourishment I need, the insight, <laughs> the wisdom, the trim I need not gonna cleanse. Uh, to look. That, that's how it is. And you know what? And and that's, why the Bible, <laughs> that's why the Bible points out. And Jody, even, even the people in the Bible, like Absalom, who was probably one of the gorgeous persons on the planet, he had to get a haircut. Yeah. At some point, because he couldn't even hold his head up with all those locks. Right, man. <laughs> There's a sermon in there, Pastor. Uh, I, I don't want to be real. This this has been an excellent conversation. But um, for those of you who are not familiar with Absalom, he was the son of King David, right. and he had a real heart issue, and so much so that he actually wanted to take his his father, King David's throne. That's right. Mm. He was plotting against him, turning yeah. his, King David's men against him. Mm, yeah. His private counsel. He yeah. even took advantage of him. Um, if you read through that story, eventually his hair was so long that it got caught in a tree. Wow. And he died. And he died there. Uh, there's some depth there. And, and a guy won't be real. That's important. That's what people yeah. did. There's yeah, some he, depth. He, he, got, he got hung, you're right, by his locks because and not only that, David, his dad, loved him so much. Loved him. Yeah. And, 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 when it, and when David's own troops, his own commanders want yeah. to take Absalom out, his father said, don't hurt him. Don't hurt him, yeah. And that, that's a man. Yeah. And God says that to us. Yeah, I don't want any of my kids to suffer. Yeah. I yeah. just want you to turn to me. And Absalom never turned to him. Yeah. And it ended up, he ended up being hung by his own hair. Wow, that's man, something else. And let me tell you this to, to your question, Craig. If somebody is seeking the Lord, 
wanted to know more about him. What does this look like? Um, number one, as a barber, um, if you are a believer, Romans 2 and 4 says it's the generosity and kindness of God that is meant to lead us to repentance, mm -hmm. right? So kindness, yes. are you with me? Kindness leads to repentance. So again, I just make that uh, significant point that as a barber, your love and kindness to somebody else could change their entire world. Right. I mean, it's that deep, right? Number two, what I would say is... Well, uh, in, a, in an aspect, too, yeah. we talk about customer service. I'm in. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Customer service is your kindness. That's right. And that's what you I talk about. And, we, and, we, and we, we talk about it. We preach that. Yeah. It's reciprocal. Yeah. I mean, like Pastor said, if, if you don't have good business practice, then you're only going to go so far. Yeah. Right? But if you have good customer service and it's genuine from a deep respect and love of other people, oh, watch how God blesses you. Mm. I mean, you know what I mean? And, and it may not even necessarily be business-wise, but your personal spiritual growth will be evident. Yes. Right? Um, you know, uh, Galatians 5, 22, if you're looking for ways to show the love of God, those are fruits of the Spirit. And I won't go into those, but this is just a nugget for those who, who are going to watch this. But you should, though, because when it, when it does, it open Tell up to... Tell them what the fruits of the Spirit are. Well, uh, you know, Paul says uh, the fruits of the Spirit are peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Right. Right. As a disciple, as a follower of Jesus, if we walk through that list, it's basically a litmus test of mm -hmm. where we are. Now, we're all a work in progress, right? And that's what I love about the, Lord, uh, the love of God is that he's so personal that he meets us right where we are, right? And we don't have to have it all figured out. I like that when you say it's a litmus test because some it people is. are actually going to use those same principles and oh, words man. to help them move forward in their careers. Because a lot of people always question themselves, especially a lot of beginning barbers, yeah. a lot of student barbers and like, oh man, I don't think I'm good. I, I, don't, I, I need something to show me. I, I want to quit. I'm not there yet. So just giving them a litmus test that you said yeah. can get you on track to understand that it's a process and it takes time. And you can't force ripe a fruit. You can't. You can't force ripe a fruit. But if you believe and you put some work in, yeah. it's going to bear. Yeah. Well, and, and a distinction I'll make is Paul said it's a fruit of the Spirit, meaning there are some of those things we can't come by on our own. Right. But it's the work of the Holy Spirit. For sure. Right. So... Back to your question, as we get to know God, these are the fruits that become more evident to those around us. Man, it's a heck of a business model that you would show love, joy, peace, mm -hmm. patience, kindness, gentleness, right? right. And self-control to your customers. That's it. You want to talk, you want to have a business, an empire? That's it. Start right there. That's it. Um, <laughs> the, se the second point, though, just to answer the question, sorry, I'm long-winded. Um, you asked, well, if somebody is wanting to know the Lord, where do they start? I think pastors shared this. Uh, I would encourage them to find a Bible even church, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a place where when they sit in those seats, the pastor or the pastors or the deacons, the word of God is what they're going to stand on. Um, one of the things I've been convicted by so much lately is that there are so many people out there talking good things. <laughs> There's so many influencers. And, and that's why I commend you, Craig, for using this platform yeah. to bring the name of the Lord up right. because there's so many influences out there. There's so many false prophets. First John four is what, what, what John talked about. There's so many people out there who might talk about things that sound good. They might talk about righteous things, but do they proclaim that Jesus is who he says he is, right? That he is the right son on. of God, that he conquered the grave in three days. And because of his death, me and you, us, the entire world, if we believe we'll never die. Mm. Right? So if somebody wants to know the Lord, well, Find yourself a Bible church and start there. Oh, and number, number 2B, don't condemn the people that are there because we're all a work in progress. For sure. You hear me? For so sure. many people look at the church and they, they join the church and they say, oh, man, I don't want to go there. These people are this and that. Well, that's a broken, good. messed up people didn't come to church. How could we ever get better? And that's yeah, a good and point. Gonna, <laughs> that's a great point. I, <laughs> I want to shift a little bit because I think it's important that for your audience who's already a believer, and you say it's just like a new bar when they like self-confident. Yeah. And so if you believe and you know the Lord, one of the scriptures I'm going to give you that's one of God's promises you can stand on is Romans 8 and 28. Yeah. And so Romans 8 and 28, I'll just share what it says. It, I'll quote it. It just says, uh, you know, and all, you know, lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge God and he would direct your path. Okay. Now, uh, and, and what, when we understand Romans 8 and 28, that, and here's what Romans 8 and 28, I just quoted uh, Proverbs, I'm sorry. Yeah. Romans 8 and 28 says, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. 
Right. So if you're new at this and you're trying to find your place and your craft and hone your skills and you're nervous and you're concerned that maybe you don't, you're worried about how you're going to be as a barber, remember, all things work together for good. Mm. To those who love God are called according to his purpose, Romans 8 and 28. So when you know you're a believer and you know that you're doing this for God's glory, he will give you confidence. He will help you home your craft. Yeah. You got to put the work in. Right. Yeah. If you're going to be good at anything, you got to work. Yeah. You want to be a great chef, you got to work. Great barber, put the work in. And you got to have some talent. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. You can go to barber school, and you know this, Craig. I know this from my dad, yeah. who used to teach barbers. But there are some people who may sign up that just does not have the skill set mm -hmm. and the right temperament to be successful at this. Right. Then you need to find your place on the wall where you can be successful. Yeah. So you, you should probably say some comments about that since you teach. I mean, it, it's important because I think that um, a, a lot of people, they come in and what this is gonna do, it's, it's so much evidence-based because we start off getting all this evidence because people go on statistics, the truth, and data. And all the statistics and the data that we've been talking about in the shaving and all the all the scriptures that we talked about is evidence based that to show you that if this is something that you're choosing, you're in the right path. Yeah. Because it's evidence based in the book, the only book in the in the world. Yeah. It's evidence based. Yeah. The evidence is right there. And if you want to look it up, do some research for yourself and it will show you that it will lead you on the path that you want to go to. That's right. Yeah. Can I, can I, let me let me add something. Um, and somehow we we got on this uh, apologetic slant, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, we're just talking about the evidence of our faith. Um, find a Bible believing church. That was my point. That was point two. And two B was don't judge the people that are there. Right. Uh, the Bible says there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Right. So that that's a message, a word of hope for those who are listening that there's nothing you've done. There's nothing that no place you've been that the love of God cannot reach you. Right. Um, and that's why I love the Lord, because, man, I'm a messy person. <laughs> nature, right. I've been vulnerable, but um, but God still loves me um, and he's calling me to more. He's calling me to so much more. Um, what I will say is this. When it comes to the Bible, uh, maybe you don't maybe you're not ready to go to a church. Right. right. Maybe you're not ready to to go and be a bunch of people who, you know, dance and sing and do all these things, especially if you don't know who God is. Right. You, right. You're trying to trying to figure that out. Um, what I would say is download a Bible app, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I would say go to the book of John, or really any of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Read any of those Gospels and you really begin to see how our Lord Jesus, who we believe as Christians, died for our sins. You begin to see how he loves people relentlessly. Well, the thing for me, right, when and why I want this podcast, again, when you make learning fun, people, you want to dive yeah. into it more. You want to dive into it more. Yeah. And just understanding all these stories that we're coming up with, about all these guys shaving their hair, shaving right. their beard, their locks. Those things are, are real things that we encounter every day right. in our, in the shop, in school. You know what I mean? So we can put that together and relate that. You're on track. Yeah. You're doing the right thing that you love. No, you're right. And the truth of the matter is, if you seek God, you'll find him. Yeah. And let me tell you what I mean by that. It is, uh, I travel a lot to some remote parts of the world. And, and in some of those places, they won't have the benefit of watching a podcast. Right. But here's what I do know. The Bible says, ask, yeah. and it should be given. Seek, yeah. and you should find. Uh, evidence of the earth, the natural beauty of the waterfalls, demonstrated as a God. Yeah. And what I know about God, he loves us so much that if you seek him, you have an opportunity for someone to discover you. You can be in a remote part of the jungle, yeah. some missionary will come to it and you will recognize who God is. Yeah. And, and what's, what's wonderful about it is all of us are work in progress. Yeah. None of us have arrived. And that's why I love 1 John 1 and 9 is referred to as a bar of soap for the believer. Because if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to mm. forgive us. And he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And we shower for a reason. Because we want to be clean. That's it. For sure. And he showers our sins off of us. Just like if I'm coming in and I'm having a problem, I'm bald headed, but if I'm having some kind of 
problem with my head. You're gonna take me to the bowl in the barber shop, and you're gonna you're gonna wash my hair, right. and yeah. you're gonna get whatever is in my scab out, and you're gonna texture, and then you say, now you gotta keep coming. I just can't come one time. Before you know it, you condition my hair in a way. Uh, I got greater growth. Mm -hmm. I'm thriving. And then I look back and I see pictures after you will take a photo and I say, man, this is how I look 90 days ago and look how good I look now. That's what you all do well for people. Yeah. And that's what God's word does for yeah. us. Yeah. Trans transform the whole mission. You can't, you can't texture a bald head though. I heard you say texture something. Yeah, I'm I like, say for those who have hair. <laughs> <laughs> God finish your point. Yeah, go I would just say this, that uh, when it comes to the word of God, you know, a lot of people have issues with the, his, the historical accuracy. Mm -hmm. is, is it a historical document? Is it real? Um, you know, in school, we learn about philosophers like Plato, or Socrates. We read about people like Caesar, Augustus, who have written all these things. But when you look at those historic writers, the number of manuscripts that we have are maybe 20 at most for each of those. Mm -hmm. And any historian will date back their writings to say, okay, they're legitimate. Right. When it comes to the Bible, we have over 25,000 manuscripts. Mm -hmm that have been studied by language experts who verify that it is accurate. Right, right. They compared the Dead Sea Scrolls found in 1948 on the West Bank of Israel to the earliest uh, copy of the Old Testament Bible. And all the chapters, all the words are accurate, 95% accurate to those scrolls that they found in the cave in 1948. Why did I want to make that point? Because it's natural to have doubts. Right, right. We're just speaking to the larger audience here. It's natural to have doubts, but if you don't give your chance, self a chance to hear from the word of God, how can you ever move past those doubts? For sure. As a pastor, I never tell anybody to believe blindly. Read it, test it, ask God to reveal himself to you, right? So I just want to finish up that question. You say, well, if somebody wants to know, well, how do they know? Well, like pastor said, read the Bible. Right. Jeremiah 29, 13, the Lord says, if you seek me with all your heart, yeah. then you'll find me. Well, for me, when I'm reading, getting into this, my career at Barber, and the more I get into it, you had what well, is the oldest profession in the world. Yeah. So I'm like, it was just natural for me to, when I, when I talk to you, Pastor Tay, I was like, we gotta do a podcast. And, and this, <laughs> this is the, this is probably like months in the development. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Months in the development. Just, just yeah, trying to keep up with it. my schedule work. Yeah, and I'm like, right. we sitting there, I'm like, I just and, wanna and, and, and I was kind of resisting it because I'm like, I don't do podcasts. But yeah. <laughs> this has been wonderful because, because what, What's important, what you're doing, Craig, you are now pouring into people in 70 different countries, mm -hmm. watching this podcast, being encouraged, learning, and we all have those moments where we thinking, should we give up? Can we make this work? And you probably, thousands of people watch this, and they're going to be inspired to not give up. Yeah. Right. To, to understand that they are embarking upon a profession that's been around since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. And that it's a noble profession mm -hmm. because what you're doing, you're helping people be groomed physically, yeah. but what you're doing, you're doing more. You're grooming them spiritually, mentally, and emotionally uh, with this podcast, which I just, I just want to compliment you thank for you, what thank you're you. doing. That's great. Yeah. Jordan, I know you sit there, it was quiet, and you're like, man, I'm taking all this in. What's, <laughs> what's going on? What'd you pick up today, Jordan? Would you? It's, it's one of them, like I said, it's one of the podcasts where I'm just listening, like, and uh, it's a very emotional type of podcast for me today because uh, I've I've really been trying to hone in and you know going back to church and and reading the Bible, which I, I haven't I haven't never done read I've never read the Bible, and uh, being here today just really made me want to start really start start doing that stuff like more you know being consistent with it and. Uh, because I feel like I've gotten to the point of being kind of stale, like mm. stagnant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like it's time to, you know, change up some stuff. And I, I feel like I've gotten to the point now where I'm going to need God in my life to help me, you know, push me towards what path I'm supposed to be really going to. Because, I mean, I, I, I work hard and uh, I've, I do everything with love. But sometimes uh, you need some, you know, you need some extra, extra oomph. Right. So, that's what's up. I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. y'all coming by. So, so, so what, what, Pastor Perry just said something to the people who have been down to, who transfer. What would, can you say to people, Anton, who's coming into this career, um, beginning barbers, new students? What can, because this is a, 
Barbara Kodrick said, this is for a student podcast. It's for everybody, but I want to hit on the nose for those, those new barbers who come in. What can you say to them? What, they, what will they be looking forward to from your experience? And why would, be this, why would this be a good career for them, a good, good career path? Oh, man. What do I say to that? Um, well, let me give you my own personal experience mm -hmm. uh, real quick. So my best barbers have been those who I genuinely have a relationship with. Right. Right. I live in Atlanta for 10 years, had many barbers. <laughs> there are tons of, tons of barbers in Atlanta. Um, some of those I got to know well, some of those I didn't. Uh, but one of my best barbers, Craig, somebody I have a relationship with. Right. Um, so if you're a new barber and you're embarking on this journey, uh, you want to be good at what you do, you're going to learn the skills as you had already said, that's going to come with practice. But I would encourage you to be present and to be genuine because people really need that. And that really is a secret sauce. When people can't know that you care, mm -hmm. they're going to keep coming back. You might not even be the best barber. Right. But if your heart is in the right place and you're loving them and caring for them, they'll keep coming back. That, that's my advice. I mean, not even a business uh, uh, tip necessarily, but just as a human tip, like right. be genuine, <clears throat> love people, care for them, and everything else will take care of itself. Yeah, that's big. What, what do you got to say, Perry? What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, I was sitting here as he was speaking, thinking about, I've lived in eight states and the U.S. and outside the U.S. and and I was thinking about what was the common ingredient, the best barbers I knew. Because with my dad being a barber, I would always go into a city, find the best barber. Yeah. For what their characteristics they had in common, they cared deeply about their customers. Yeah. They were noble people, mm -hmm. and they were engaged in other things outside of barber. Yeah. Uh, to help their community be stronger. And then, like I introduced you to G. Yep. Okay. All people who. They had a relationship with God. Yeah. They had a spiritual guidance and compass, and God gives us that spiritual insight that we can't get on, on our yeah. own. And I can tell you, if you want to be successful in whatever endeavor you're doing in this space, you got to first love people. Yeah. You want to be gifted at what you do, so you got to practice your skill. Mm -hmm. You got to do that. And then you need God to, to guide you and direct you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's really important. God so loved the world. What did he do? He gave his only yeah. begotten son, yeah. according to John 3, 16, that whoever believes in him won't perish, yeah. but have everlasting life. Amen. And when he says that he so loved the world, that he gave his son as a sacrifice to die for our sin, he died in our place because we deserve death. And if you know that, and you believe that, and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he will guarantee your success if mm. you obey him. Mm. Now, what, what better promise than that, that you'll guarantee success by reading the word if you yeah. obey me? Wow. It's that simple. If you yeah. obey me and honor me with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your might, and he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Seek me first the kingdom of yeah. heaven, this righteousness. Come on. <laughs> and everything else I'll give it to. Yeah. And you know what? That's been my saving grace. That's been my success story is seeking yeah. him. Yeah. And I've watched him. And I'll be 65 uh, coming up in July. Yeah. I've watched him order my steps as a young child, and particularly order my steps when I became a young adult and was running around trying to figure things out. And when I just let him have it, he's opened up every door for yeah. me. Wow. And that's been wonderful. And any door he opens, no man can shut. Yeah. And any door he closes, no man can open. Yeah. So why not let him open the doors I can't open? Sure. The, the fun, the interesting thing is that I know when I told you guys to come on this podcast, you didn't, you didn't realize what you're getting into. And we've been on this platform now for a little bit close to an hour. It doesn't seem like it. Right. It doesn't seem like it. So, so right. what was your experience today? What do you feel? What do you, what do you, what, what was your experience today on the podcast? What do you, what do you think of it? Man, I, I've enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a great conversation. Um, and, and as a pastor, I love being able to cut, connect my faith with everyday people, right, right, they are cutting hair, you know, running shops, aspiring to be a uh, great barber. So I've enjoyed the conversation. It's been natural, um, and there's an authenticity here for sure uh, with my man and Jordan. I mean, you guys generally obviously care about what you do, and that's why we're talking in this way. And the courage 
to allow faith to be a part of the conference. I couldn't wait that's to do not, it. That's not always the case. I couldn't wait because it talks about it in our industry. I couldn't wait to do it. I've been <laughs> talking to Perry about this. Yeah. yeah, you're right. And you know what? It's been a, a major surprise in a positive <laughs> way for me. Right. Because normally, you know, I was looking at this like, oh, gee, another meeting, another yeah. work, thinking like that somebody want me to speak here, speak there. But this, this was genuine. It was real. It's authentic. Yep. And it's helpful. It's impactful. I didn't anticipate that I was going to be here ministering. Yeah. And that's, just, that's just, that's because, but look, the credit goes to you for that. Because frankly, you've set this up. Yeah. Uh, that this is ministry for you mm. to help people be right. successful, to help all of those who are watching. And it's wonderful because it's authentic. You authentic, you've always been that way. You sure. know what I love about your career? You've been real. And, and I can see now why this is in 70 country yeah. because <laughs> it's real, it's alive. And, and yeah. we're just being honest with each other. You know, we're not perfect. We're talking about uh, things we've learned and and it's, it's been fantastic. So yeah. this has been an amazing afternoon for me. Great. To answer your question. What about you, Jay? Oh, yeah. So, I'm over here just vibing. I feel it. Um, obviously, I like, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect because Craig texted me. He was like, man, we got, he said, it's going to be a good one this coming up week. So I said, like, <laughs> you got to be here. I was like, all right, I'm coming. But yeah, I had a, I had a great time. A real, real great time. I'm glad both, I'm glad, got the new yeah, book man. too. Uh, like both y'all great people. Definitely inspired me to, you know, change some things. So. Typically on the podcast too, people always send like messages and want to get feedback from around the world, around the country. And so where can people find you if they want to get to um, ask you a question about something you said or just say thank you, you inspired me yeah. for your words of encouragement. Where can someone find you? If you don't mind giving me information. You don't yeah, have yeah, to, no, but. no. Uh, the easiest way to reach out to me without having to spell out my email address um, would be to go to uh, Depot City Church. Depot City Church. That's D-E-P-O-T. Depot City Church. Uh, it's a church I'm pastoring here in Johnson City, Tennessee. And send me a message. Uh, I think that'd be the easiest way. My approach to the, 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 to the Bible is very plain, uh, you know, and very down to earth. Right. So I'm very, <laughs> very real and open about how I share the word. So, um, yeah, go to our Facebook page, Depot City Church, and uh, like us, follow us, send me a message through there. We'd love to connect. Definitely. What about you, Pastor? Rick, people, because you have some qu We always have questions. People always want to find yeah, out. Yeah, it's who probably we better to text me. You want to give me the phone number? But I'll be honest, my, uh, my email. I don't uh, want my email. Uh, so, so go to, to Central Baptist Church, yep. okay, at, at uh, Outlook.com. Yep. Central Baptist Church, Outlook.com, uh, because if you come to me directly, I'll have it inundated with so many messages. But Central Baptist but, uh, yes. Central Baptist Church. You can send Outlook. me a message on um, the Barber College Success website or at Info at Crowdcast Academy, and we can go more in depth and talk about what we talked about today. But again, thank you for this platform. It was great. I thank you guys for coming, and again, keep doing what you're doing. Keep spreading love. The crowd cuts away the only way. Shout out to Feed Spot. We're ranking in the top 25 podcasts in the world. We're over in 75 countries around the world. I mean, just thank you for the love and appreciate you. Just keep coming. We're going to keep coming with fresh, fresh content to keep this thing live. Uh, we just came up with a Facebook page. Not a Facebook page. I'm sorry. We just came up with a, uh, a website for Barber College Success. Go check it out. We have all our episodes on there. You can find us on Spotify, any major platform, podcast platform, on YouTube. Go back and check out our videos. Like us, follow us. So keep sending messages because we're here for you to encourage you, encourage you to help you because this journey, you don't have to do it by yourself. You don't have to try this journey yeah. by yourself. You have people on there, and that's why I've always been a wonderful guest platform from around the country, from Chicago to California to New York to Boston to Florida. We have people coming and zooming in just to kind of get some good content because a lot of times you'll realize that what you're going through, you don't have to go through it by yourself. A lot of people go through the same thing. A lot of us have the same questions. Again, thank you for tuning in. Barber College Success, downtown Johnson City, Bristol, Virginia, and now Proficient Nail Academy. Signing out. Peace.